time now for everybody's favorite guessing game, What's My Line? Brought to you by Remington Rand, makers of the world's number one electric shaver, the Remington. Now, let's all play What's My Line? Our show, God bless you, somebody just sneezed. The appearance of our mystery celebrity. My friends on the panel, I uh, have, of course, blindfolds for this part of the program. Arlene's got a new one. <laughs> Looks like somebody's lifted her eye. But the blindfolds are all in place, are they, panel? Mm -hmm. Yes. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? In the case of our mystery challenger, we get right down to the general questioning, which we will begin with um, Dorothy Kilgallen. Are you accustomed to appearing before audiences? Yes. Are you in some form of the entertainment business? Yes. Are you a performer? Yes. Are you something other than a plain dramatic actor? Or I don't mean plain, but a, a straight dramatic actor. Yes. Um, are you funny? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Allen. You sound funny to me. Might you be described, uh, or well, might you have ever been in motion pictures? Let me find that out. Have you ever been in motion pictures? Yes. Have you ever played a lead in a motion picture? Yes. Uh, do you work in television? Yes. Do you have a regular program? <laughs> <laughs> Would you ask that question again, Steve? I say, do you have a regular program? We can keep this just between us, you know. <laughs> no. That's too dominant to go, Miss Francis. I'm really not sure from the roof <laughs> whether it's a man or a woman. Uh, is this a... Uh, are, you a are you a male? Yes. Well, why did you wait? <laughs> <laughs> Is there only one person there? Yes. I guess John went home. <laughs> <laughs> but now, you are, not a, you are not a, a, a particularly a dramatic actor. You are not a comedian. Do you sing or dance? Yes. Uh, do you sing? Yes. <laughs> you must have hit some bad notes to get your voice into such terrible shape. <laughs> um, have you sung in theaters? Yes. Are uh, you a Bobby Soxer's delight? I'll answer that one. Yes, Miss Bess. Um... <laughs> Actually, I didn't have to answer it. Have you? No, my goodness. Uh, are you on lots of jukeboxes? In them? <laughs> on them? <laughs> yes. Would I be going too far if I asked you to say one yes out loud yourself under your own steam? I mean, now that you've let off steam? <laughs> no? Yes. All right. What? It, you, you want to hear I just one? would like to hear... That isn't, that isn't the gentleman's regular voice, is it? No, it is not. No. That, but it, we'll give you one yes. See what happens. Give me one yes, sir. A girl tries so hard to get a yes from a fellow. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Should be vice versa. But anyway, give me a yes. Yes. Uh... Are you fair? 
And warmer. <laughs> I would think, generally speaking, you might say fair, yeah. Um, are you a young man that has made crying an indoor sport? Yes. Well, there's the yes that did it. Is it Johnny Ray? Yes! Johnny, you did a wonderful job. Hope you had a lot of fun. It's nice well, I was to a little see. worried because I know Mr. Allen so well that I was afraid if I spoke in my normal voice, it would be a dead giveaway because uh, I knew that he was he was probably more familiar with my speaking voice than anyone else. And so we had oh, to be Johnny, now, now that now you fooled, fooled us so marvelously, how about giving out with just a little something that we'd all recognize? <laughs> I could do an impression for you. I uh, just finished a picture out in Hollywood, and I suppose the best thing I can do on a company is an impression that uh, Dan Daly did of me, as, which he originated on the set of this picture I just finished. And it always struck me as rather funny. Of course, I've seen quite a few impressions of myself here and there. <laughs> but uh, on, the, on the set, he always used to have this running thing where he would do cry, and it always went like this. If your sweetheart sends a letter of goodbye. <laughs> I, must, I must also add that I always had a comeback for him. I used to look at him and I'd say, don't forget, Mr. Daly, in this picture you play my father and I don't have to listen to you. <laughs> This is uh, one Mr. Daly I would like you to listen to. <laughs> Spell the name differently and everything, so it'll be all right. It's awfully good to see you here in the East. What uh, brings you to New York? Well, Wait, before you do that, you were very nice. I think this is the first man I have ever known from Hollywood who talked about a picture he was in and never gave its name. Now, what is the name of that picture you just made? I can't remember. <laughs> Carl, there's no business like show business. Well, good. Now tell us why, why, what brings you to New York. Well, 20th Century Fox is having a premiere here. Tuesday night at the Roxy for uh, Daryl of Xanax, The Robe, and, I, and it's for the March of Dimes, and we uh, came back, uh, we finished the picture, we came back expressly for that purpose, and we'll be there ourselves Tuesday night to sort of carry it off. Now, this is for um, uh, March of Dimes, isn't it? Yeah, what the did Egyptian? I say? The you said The Egyptian. Robe. Well, I got, ner I got so nervous with this. <laughs> Well, actually, then either you're going to be here to be a part of this uh, New York yeah, premiere. Yeah, the Egyptian March of Dimes premiere, that's right. Right. Actually, the, the uh, premiere is very important because it's anticipated that uh, out of this premiere, which John has come to lend his good offices and his fame to, they will make uh, some $40,000 for the March of Dimes. I've been watching my television set, and uh, I know very well that a lot of you have heard a good many people remind you about the March of Dimes, which is in a emergency campaign now. So I'm not going to tell you much about what it does. You ought to know that. I think you do know it. And I also think you know how important it is to support the March of Dimes in this emergency. So uh, you, no matter where you live in these great United States, do your bit for the emergency March of Dimes campaign because uh, we haven't licked this thing polio yet and we better get to our lasts and do something about it, something extraordinary. Well, Johnny, we had a wonderful time. I think you, you had a good time. I hope so, because it was nice having you with us. I was us scared, and... but it was worth it. Good. <laughs> Would you say bye-bye to the panel? If you get it all... Now for everybody's favorite guessing game, What's My Line? Brought to you by Remington Rand, makers of the revolutionary new Remington Rolectric. Now let's all play What's My Line? Special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, for which I've asked my friends on the panel to blindfold themselves, as is the custom, Blindfolds all in place, panel? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Good. Yes, Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please?
All right, panel, as you know, in the case of our mystery challenger, we go to a different form of questioning. Uh, Ozzy and Miss Janet particularly, you ask one question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise. And let's begin with Janet Blair. Well, everybody knows you, that's for sure. Are you in show business, sir? Yes! Sir, how'd you know it was a sir? I just presumed it was a sir. Bennett? Uh, it was a sir. I was so busy asking how she knew it was a sir, I didn't hear the answer. That's too bad. You want to take a plunge? I'll take a plunge. Are you in show... Uh, you said show. Are you ever, <laughs> ever been in television? Yes! Miss Kilgallen? Are you a comedian? I didn't hear anything. <laughs> Are you a comedian? No! One down and nine to go. Ozzie Nelson. Uh, are you primarily in motion pictures? No! Two down and eight to go, Miss Blair. Are you primarily in the nightclub circuit? Oh! <laughs> Very good answer. <laughs> Bennett, sir. Have you got a wife who appears with you? No! <laughs> Three out of seven to go, Miss Gilgallon. Do you play a musical instrument? Do you play a mu You mean as a basic occupation, Dorothy? Well... Because, I mean, only, I only intercede uh, here because I don't want to mislead you with the answer. I know, John. Thank you. Uh, no, just does he play a musical instrument that we would know about. Uh, not uh, does he play it in the privacy of his den, but uh, if he has ever played a... A musical instrument publicly. Well, this is a moot question. Actually, what has to be decided, do you play a musical instrument so that it would be known as a matter of public fact, or do you uh, just play it at home for your own amusement? If you play it at home for your own amusement, the answer would be no to Miss Kilgallen's question. Yes! <laughs> Mr. Nelson. Uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't... That reversed itself now. Uh, he plays he, public, he right? plays a musical instrument publicly. He plays a musical instrument, and that would be a known fact to the general public. Uh, is that the principal reason why you are known, because of your playing this musical instrument? No! Four down and six to go, Miss Blair. Are There's you... no conference call, please. <laughs> are you... Um... Here in the East, possibly to do a stage show? No! Five down and five to go, Mr. Sir. Have you ever played a character in a continuing television series? No! Six down and four to go, Miss Kilgallen. Are you tall, dark, and handsome? <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> Seven down and three to go, Mr. Nelson. Uh, it has, it a, has anyone asked if he appears regularly on television? That has not, I think, been given not specifically a as a question. It, it has. Uh, are you primarily known as a television entertainer? No! Eight down and two to go, Miss Blair. There's been no call for a conference. Let's I have none of these it. mutterings in the background, please. Uh, I must say, I'm stumped. We've covered all of the different areas of show business. You can pass, Miss Janet, if conference? you want to. I think I better... Shall Beg I pardon, Dorothy? Stage? May we have a conference? You may have 30 seconds for a conference. Uh, I think, do you think he could be... A, he's not a comedian. Should we establish if he's a straight actor, or do you think he could well, be a singer? A, he's not primarily moving pictures. He's not primarily in television. Maybe, Maybe he's primarily in, uh, records. Michael, must be primarily... Records. In, either, records. Either, either, records? Either, either records. Yes, records. No, we haven't asked. That. That's probably what it is. Shall I ask that? Sure. All right, kiss, I think. <laughs> uh, do you primarily make records? Uh, Have you ever performed any deeds of daring do in some form of athletics? No, it's a... It's a... No! Nine down it's and one to go, Miss Kilgallen. Are you a stage actor? No! Ten down and no more to go. You may unmask and meet Johnny Ray, who is a singer. <laughs> Thank you.
I must uh, say this, Bennett. Voice. If I had been on the panel and heard that voice, I would have said, Singer, impossible. You know who uh, I thought it was? Who? Andy Devine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, by no stretch of my imagination, expected to get by Miss Kilgallen because I, uh, I've been racking my brain trying to think of voices, and the most I could think this actually sounds like when I'm on stage. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, boy. Johnny, that was wonderful. It was the most raucous tone we've heard on this program. I hope program he can still in sing. <laughs> yes, sir. Ozzy said he sounds like Rochester to me, and I said half of them do. <laughs> <laughs> Well, actually, you, you've been at the Empire Room at the Waldorf, and we were afraid, you know, that all of you would say, right off the bat, singer Johnny Ray. So Johnny made you believe he wasn't a singer, and you did a wonderful job. Well, the only thing I could say about being an actor would be is I've only made one, actually, one film, so I can't really consider myself an actor, and I've heard a few of my own records, and I don't consider myself a singer. <laughs> And we I'm thank you for stupid, being a gracious what's, guest. What's the instrument, Johnny, that you play? Piano. Piano. It's featured in my act. Is it? Mm -hmm. It's always been. <laughs> He's got it. You got it with you? Oh, no, he hasn't brought it with him. I'm sorry, Bennett. <laughs> thank you, Johnny. It's wonderful to have had you with us and watch my <laughs> Bennett, we have just enough time to... And now, uh, perfumed rice and all until next week. This is John Daly saying good night, Dorothy. Good night, John. Awfully nice to have you, Ozzy. Happy trip. Goodbye. Well, thank you very much. It's a real pleasure to have been here. And nice to see you again, Janet. Nice to see you too, Ozzy. And uh, although I took Arlene's place tonight, in truth, no one can really take her place. Good night, Dennis. She's probably kicking up her heels in Jamestown, Virginia tonight. Good night, John. Good night, and good night, Ozzy and Janet. You were great, and hello, Arlene, and thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us on What's My Line? Transportation for What's My Line was arranged by American Airlines. Guests are flown to New York aboard America's famous luxury flight, the DC-7 Mercury. This has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production.